All right, so for lab seven, it's all right here. There's the PDF, which I'm going to show you. There's last year's recording, and here's the English text file you need. Okay. Now, okay. Now, I want to show you. I copied it over here, and my computer is doing something, so it might explode here in a minute. It's probably going to ask you if you want the Windows <laughs> 7 right Yes. Now, there is the password. Wow. Oh, yay. That is fantastic. Notepad. Okay. Now I'm trying to show you. When you open this in Notepad, you get this. Okay? <laughs> when you open it, like in TextPad, you get this. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to show you so when you get home and open it and get this crappy list. Okay? <laughs> Reason is it's Unix formatted. Notepad doesn't know what to do with it. You know what that's the, the end of yeah, they're passwords. What's unfrontified? Oh, hell, I know. <laughs> Are you unfrowning now? <laughs> well, it's frustrating. You're very unilaxial today. Oh, yeah. Well, that. <laughs> Unia or unibasal? I don't know what these things mean. I'm just. Wait, how can you That's be unibavalent? Yes, but you can be unicyclist. So, the point is, as a text file, it's not going to open correctly, but it's formatted so it'll work fine in the Unix system. Okay, or a text file will open. So. Are you okay on that? That is up there. Just copy it out of there and you can use it. Now, let's talk about this project. At the same time, I'm going to bring up my vSphere system here. Does it involve a new tool? Yeah. Yes, two new. Well, one new and one kind of used before. Kind of used? <laughs> well, we hope you used it at one point or another. I just don't know what, it took, to what extent you used it. Yes, you do. Oh, you printed it out? Mark is on the ball. He's up there every five minutes refresh. Come on, you need to post I had to sit at that stupid spring enrollment. That's probably, I, I can see you at home waiting. Summer enrollment in all day. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Oh, that's even more than that. Okay. It's so right. do your homework. That's the way to do your homework. All right. Does everybody know how to get into the Cali machine? You didn't even spell my name right. No, what? I have not. Typed it fast. I, I really didn't it spell it right? No. How do you spell young? Why are you in G? That's not a D. Oh, well. <laughs> Whoops. No, young it. You're young it now. <laughs> now. I don't right. get into okay. Now, each of you, if you log into the vSphere system, everyone how to get into the vSphere system. Okay. You'll, under Spring 2014, you'll find your name. Okay. Find your name. Find your machine. Like here, Daphne, you would right click and say power on. Okay. Then once it's powered on, you would right click and say open console. It's important you do it that way. If you use this tab up here at the top, this is console, it's not nearly as user friendly. Because it opens up in a frame and then the window's not full and then you can't see it as well and you're going to complain that the screen's too small. So what you do is you right click over here, open console, then you can actually minimize that other screen. You don't. It. And it'll come up. And you can change the resolution, you can do whatever you want. Okay? I just happened to be logged into mine because I was looking at it earlier today. Okay? Now we're in Cali language. What's the password? Do we need a password? Yes, you need a username and password, which I cannot supply to you. But you will not supply. You I can. will not supply to you. you Google has have it, and it's right on the top of the list. It's Google has it. <laughs> don't tell him! He's going to have to figure it out. No, I'm telling him. You're a jerk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag. Like, uh, she <laughs> called me a <laughs> jerk. But you can. Google but that's the joy of my semester when people says, cry and moan and groan. <laughs> then they. I said, "Did you ask Google?" He says, like, it's "Oh the crap, it was right there this whole time." Result when you Google it, he says it's like right there. So it is. Assume things. Okay. Uh, the reason for that, in case you're wondering, in the past I have given out the username and password. And it never fails. People will call me. I can't remember it. Like, you know, if I don't ever tell it to you, <laughs> then you just go get it. Ah, there it is. Okay. There it is. Now, <laughs> so let's talk about what this assignment is first of all. So the administrator of the company has called you and he needs access to a system and some information on the system. But he forgot the IP address. He forgot the username and password. And he's also determined the credential 
and retrieve the generic general purpose RSA keys. He forgot them too. He lost them. He, need, he lost his keys. Mm -hmm. So I need the RSA keys and the encryption RSA keys located on the system. Identify it. Refer to the documentation of how to get the keys. I'm not going to tell you how. Sorry. Uh, there's always something in these projects. Something important. Okay, everything you need is already installed on Kelly to an extent. Okay, you need Nmap and Hydra is all you need. Nmap and Hydra? Nmap and Hydra. That's You've right. used Nmap before. Yeah. I'm going to show you how Nmap works. Oh, yeah, Hydra's online. Okay, Nmap is very tough. Take notes. Nmap. IP address 10. Hold on, number locked. 10, dot 10, dot 0, dot 2. This is not the one you're using, by the way. This is just a demo. I hit enter. It starts. Armitage is for Metasploit. Okay. Okay, let me do three. Maybe, oh, there it came out. There it is. Okay. What NMAP did is scan the system. It showed me all the open ports. Easy enough. If you want, you can use Zenmap. For those of you who have to have the GUI version, 10.10.0.2. Now, when you do the scan, just do the quick scan. Now, you notice it actually fills in the command for you here, but you really don't need that. You really just need the IP address and Nmap, just like I typed on the other one. Okay, that's all you need. It's just going to, well, how, if you leave the intent, no, it, no, it won't hurt to leave it there. But for some reason, ZenMap does not work on your machines. That sucks. It doesn't? No. Why are you telling me? Wait, then how did it just pop up? That's my machine. machine. Hey, he's this his machine. Refer to documentation. Okay. <laughs> Refer to hacking. There's this place that could probably tell you how to fix it. Okay. It's very simple. It starts with a Okay, but you run it, and it can come up, and it's going to tell you what protocols are running on this machine, what ports are open. So we know we got port 53, which is DNS. We got 80, which is HTTP, so on and so forth. The service is really the protocol. Okay, everybody understand that. So in the project, I tell you, okay, it says, using an Nmap or Zenmap, you need to figure out how to get Zenmap to work. It did take me about 35 seconds, so it was tough. Okay. Um, Hydra or X-Hydra, you can use either one. Okay. It says, use the Nmap, find the system on the network. Then use Hydra to break the password and service needed to access the system. So, in Nmap, remember, it shows you the port, but then shows you the service. Okay. The one you're going to be working with has not been screwed with in any way, which is good for you guys. But in the real world, like at my house, what, anyone know what port 20 is? Uh, it's FTP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mine goes to my solar system. <coughs> port 21 is also FTP. That goes to my energy system. Um, oh, right, so I, I, I reroute all the ports and make everything configured differently. Mm. That's why you can actually use a port and a service separately. You can say, I want to use FTP on port 80. So you can do that, but I didn't do it on the system you're messing with. Okay. So if it's port, if you find it's port 80, HTTP, that's what it is. I didn't go in there and configure for SNMP or something like that. Yes, sir. So you're saying that uh, port 80 is, when we see that uh, port 80 is an HTTP service. Correct. Default. 480 would be an HTTP Correct. service. Correct. Okay, so if it's I didn't change. So if you see port 20, that's FTP. Okay. See port 80, it's HTTP. If you see port 53, it's DNS. But if that I'd, was changed, right. the program would still tell us the unchanged. Right. Okay. So what you have to do is using Hydra, mm -hmm. if you were trying to break in my system at home, you'd have to say, oh, port 20, HTTP. Because to connect to my solar system, I connect to an FTP port with HTTP. A lot of places do that. You know, when I first started running my ISP, I used to use another guy's initially, and he ran a Linux system. He accepted no defaults. In other words, anything that's normally set up, he would change. 
And it's great because it's very secure, but it kind of sucks to use because anything you know is wrong. Well, you've learned it's out the window. Yeah. Right. So, but the system you're messing with has not been screwed with like that. So when you find, there's only two services. Okay, use them. Well, use one of them. All right. So, so what you need to do is, says, then use Hydra, I'm up here, use Hydra to break the password and service needed to access the system. Then use the appropriate tool to access the system and retrieve keys specified above. So if you were using HTTP, which tool would you use? Web browser? If it was port 20, FTP, you would use FTP, that kind of stuff. So whatever you need to access it with. Okay? It's not nothing special there. Okay? It says the system is located on the class C network of 10.10.99.0 slash 24. It's somewhere in there. Okay? You can find it with Nmap. Okay. Hint, anything outside there is not it. There's lots of systems on that network. So if you scan my entire network, like some people did in pen testing, they scan 10, 10, 0, 0. <laughs> That's basically 65,000 IP addresses found every now. <coughs> Don't do that. It's not there, okay? <laughs> you only need the one where the third number is 99. <clears throat> so if you find anything else, it's not it. Don't do it. Don't waste your time. <coughs> okay. Then use N, okay, so use Nmap and Zmap to find it. We know that. Just like I showed you, okay? Now, um, I think, let me try something here. I think you can actually do a range like that. <coughs> yes, you can. So, nice tool. So, and the cool thing about Zmap, it actually shows you what it's doing. It shows you the command that you really can go run yourself if you wanted to. So there's should be two and then three. So you can do a range like that. Can you still pipe that out to a document if you wanted to? Um, I think. Hold on. Did it like a little uh, I don't know. Let's. I don't know if you can in here. Let's try it. It's going somewhere. Oh. Don't know where. Nice. Okay. So yeah, you can still do it. Fantastic. All right. Um, and you can type the command just as easily here. We can go control C. You can do nmap n m a p 10.10.0.2-3 results. So I mean you can do it right there. So you can do it either way. Okay. All right. So that's enough of nmap. Everybody okay with nmap? All right. Now. The other tool you can use is Hydra. I'm not going to run it for you because it'll kind of give away if I, because I'll have to connect to a system and make it work, and I don't want to do that because you'll see it. So, <laughs> video from last? it is, it's That's just a little different. Okay. Yeah, you can do it. See, when, when the video recording you watch is actually connecting to a different type of system than you're connected to. So, yeah, it's fun. You can watch that, see how it's done. I'm not going to walk through the command. I'll even show it to you. I'm just not going to execute the command. Okay? Hydra. Use it at the command line. And here's the exact command. Hydra dash capital L ID dot text. All right. You just said exact. That says similar. Is that So far, we're command? exact. So far, we're exact. He's not done yet. So far, we're exact. ID dot text will be your list of usernames, which you're going to make, which we'll get to in a second. As long as you call it id.txt, this command is correct. If you call it users.txt, obviously you're going to replace it with users.txt. Whatever you call it, okay? Then you're going to have to dash capital P english.txt. That's what I gave you. Now, if you save it as passwords, well, then you need to change that to say passwords, okay? So far, we're exact, unless you change it. Yeah. Then dash V, okay? That means verbose. Then dash S is the port. Remember when you ran Nmap, you saw those ports? It was port 80, port 23, port whatever. So specify the port, okay? So dash S is the port number. Dash F. Um, dash F forces it to stop when it finds the correct one. This tool is made to run forever. So if you run this, it will literally find it and keep going because it might want to try different ones. 
because you can at least give it a ton of usernames and a ton of passwords and you can try each one. So the dash F tells it, okay, once you find the correct one, you can stop. So without that, you look at hit start, go get a drink, it passes by and you never know the answer. Okay? So probably a good thing to do. Now dash T2 is the number of threads. Talk about what a thread is, first of all. Okay? You can have a program running. This program can do multiple things, kind of like multitasking. Okay? Too many threads will kill our system. Okay. For instance, SSH is built in to ignore too many threads. And if 30 of you start all running SSH at the same time with a bunch of threads, guess what happens? The system will ignore you. It doesn't even tell you. It just stops answering. And you're running, you don't even know it's not working because it basically says, oh, they're trying to break in, it just ignores you. So too many threads can be an issue as well. It defaults to 36. For the protocol you're using, 10 should be fine. I mean, you could probably go a little higher, but okay. So dash T10? Then? Should be fine. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to make this command very simply in a minute. So remember, the port could change. Dash S25 if it's what, what's 25 in weather? SMTP, email. So if it, if it happened to be email, which it's not, so it's not exact, but it's close. <laughs> All right, got that? All right, so dash O out that text is going to put the output somewhere. Okay? Where do you want to put the results to? Because it's always a good idea, kind of like with Nmap, dump it to a file, that way you can look at it later. Then the IP address you're going to connect to. Now you found the IP address with an Nmap. So the IP address you want to connect to, and then the protocol, SMTP, HTTP, SSH, or whatever, okay? So far, so good? Oh, yeah, you got them all broken out. Yeah. I mean, I even tell you what every yeah. little bit means, okay? So let's run, let's, um, then you can also use Xhydra. And it's GUI. So you can cheat and do it the easy way, okay? Now, with Xhydra... You can specify the IP address, which would be the one you're going to connect to, obviously. And you'll notice, see at the bottom? I'm going to see the bottom of the window? Yeah. Beaver bows, debug. It's even oh, building the command for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can put in the IP address. You can put in the port, port 25. You can pick the protocol. I want, you know, whatever, CVS, whatever. I don't, CVS, I don't know what that is. Isn't that a, Walgreens. Yeah, Walgreens is better. No. You can say be verbose, and see, by adding that, you'll see it puts the V in there. Show attempts. You know, do you want to see what has happened? There's the big V. So it's actually building the command as we go. Um, you can use a target list. If you do that, it wants you to point to it. Like, say you make a text file with a bunch of different IP addresses, you could do that. Okay. Wait, what? Okay. All right. Say instead of connecting to one machine, you're going to try to break into 50 machines. You can make a list of all the different IP addresses and put them in a text file. Then click on target list and it'll, that's where you have your text file listing. So you can make a bunch of lists from the end map and make a test one. Okay. okay. Now passwords, oh, okay. okay? You can put in the username or you can use your username list. So if you wanted to, you could just try KDewey. Or you could put in your entire username list and select here. And that's one that you Right, that's when we're going to create it, which I haven't talked about yet. We're going to get there in a second. The passwords, again, you can put in a single password, or you can put in the password list. Save that English.txt, click here, and point to it. You know, whatever. There you go. It's whatever. Okay. How do you get it in Web browser. Right there. There's your web browser. Connect to Canvas, copy the file over, and you're good. That's how you're going to probably submit your assignment anyway from in here. Okay. Everybody okay on username and password? You can use a colon separated file. You don't really need it. Try, don't do login as password. I mean, you could. It's only going to take 0.1 second anyway. But well, that's like user, user. You know, upstairs, password, user, user. That would solve that one. And it's not empty, so you don't need what to try those. Around users, David? Start again when you get to the end. Well, because maybe you got a longer password file. I don't know. Or maybe you got multiple systems, too. You want to try every username on every system. So, all right. Tuning. 
here's where you put your threads. 36, 10, 2, whatever. You know, 10's probably good there. And you'll see it's changing the number at the bottom. Oh, well, it should change the number at the bottom. Well, oh, there it goes. Okay, it took it. Okay. Here is the exit. See, this puts the dash F in there. Watch. See how the F goes in there? Right here at the bottom after the T10. If I get rid of that, the F goes away. So that puts it, you don't need a proxy for this. So you can skip that. You can put some other specific material in here. This might come in handy. You'll have to look into that. I don't know. There's always something you've got to figure out. <laughs> then click Start. So, I mean, that's really all that is, and it's going to show you the result on the screen. I can't run it to show you oh, what it so. does, because I'd have to put in the right information to at least test it. And then, see, in the past, we used two different systems, and I tested it one way, then we did it on, a, I reconfigured it so you could do it on another, but we can't do that right now. What happens if you put in an invalid uh, IP? It just won't connect. Oh, that's all it'll say. Okay. Like I could go over here, I guess, and try. I guess I could do that. Okay, let's try that. There you go. Let's try it. I tried K doing in your pass. That's what it's going to do. Okay, but yours is going to try more. It's going to be connecting a whole big old list of usernames and a big old list of passwords. Okay. Is it finished? Yeah, it's I mean, done. The last line would be tested. Yeah, because it only tested one. Oh, okay. See, right here, that's a good point. Here where it says one of one, okay. Okay. yours will be like one of 25,000. Oh. It'll be two of 25,000, three of 20. You keep watching it. Do you have that set up to output anywhere? No, I do not. Okay. Oh, okay, well, it finished. Okay. okay. That's because it couldn't connect to it. There was no service. Children. That's why it was trying to connect to it, and it was no system connected. Waiting for children. It, the reason is I used a port that that machine's not configured on, so we couldn't connect to it. Yours, you'll know the port, so it will connect. All right, and it'll say finish when done. Okay. So everybody okay on using this tool? It's pretty simple. And then we're going to, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. So does this tool run quickly, like I can budget a couple of hours? Okay, or if you guess budget, the like correct a user hour period, like. Okay, what I would do if I was you is make a list of usernames. You already have the password list. Yeah. Run that against it. Okay, it goes somewhat quick. Like it'll, it'll connect all 10 immediately. Okay. Then they'll return within a second or so. But the problem is, I mean, if you guess the correct username right off, you're done. But if, because I gave you the password. Right. So it's all about you guessing the correct username. Now, if you make a whole bunch of usernames that all suck and it's not in the list, then you really could be running quite a while. Okay? Make sense? I would make some, I mean, find the system. That's going to take you 10 minutes. Should. Okay? So, I mean, I gave you a very small class C network to look at. Looking for basically a port number? Yeah, there's one machine running two ports, and that's it. Actually, there should only be one machine on the entire network anyway. As long as you scan the correct network. If you scan 10, 10, 0, 0, you're going to find thousands, and you're going to be beating your head up. It's 10, 10, 99, not something. And it's in that range between 0 and 24. 0 and 254. 20, okay. The slash 24, let me go back to that. Cider, yeah. The slash 24 is the classless interdomain routing number. You know when you hold that subnet mask, 255, 255, 255, 0, that's what it means. So that last number can be anything from 0 to 254. But it's somewhere in that range. So you literally could do an end map and say 1 254 and hit enter and it work. You could do that. Or you could actually type it in exactly like it gave it to your work as well. So. Oh, with a dash? Yeah, with a slash. Oh, slash. You can, you can do that. So, so how I'm many not totally usernames mean. total should we come up are going to? You only need one. Find two. You only need one username. You only need one username? The correct one. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, let's continue on. We haven't covered, we're going to cover that part right now. All right. The usernames. Usernames can contain any valid character. Normally, I put stuff in bold that means something. Wow, really? Can contain any valid character supported by the protocol you're using. You don't know that yet. Such as dashes, periods, spaces, tildes, smiley faces, mailboxes, bombs, windows logos. What? How do you what? like that? You like that? I added that this time. <laughs> I don't like windings. 
So in other words, make sure you follow the bold part. ASCII code. Because so many people screw this part up. You need to find out what a valid username is. If you're testing with an invalid username, your system will not work. It will literally give you false positives all day long. And then you're like, well, gave me the username and password and I can't log in. Well, maybe it's because the password is wrong. Because you're using an invalid username. It so find out what the, yeah. It won't tell you you have an invalid username. Correct. Okay. Uh, the point is, when I first started working here in 1996, anyone ever heard of Banyan Vines? Yeah. Well, that's what they used. They told me, your name is Ken Space Dewey. No, I didn't. That's not my username. Oh, yeah, it is. I'm like, no, seriously. No system supports spaces. I'll be darned, it did. It was literally Ken Space Dewey. I'm like, seriously? Does anyone know any system supports the space? Mm -mm. How about a mailbox? Mm -mm. Probably not. Good. Okay. So you should be able to figure out what's valid. But look at the protocol. Figure out what a valid username is. Mm. Then mangle the name I give you. For instance, Ken Dewey could be K Dewey, Ken Dash Dewey, so on and so forth. Okay, and here's your names. <coughs> and we're, we're manually mangling these, right? Manually, okay. yeah, that's a good point. You, there are automated tools to do that. Perfect example is Todd Qualls. I don't think anyone knows Todd, do they? <laughs> Todd used this automated tool, <coughs> and it he had to do his own name, Todd Qualls. So his list was Todd, to Todd, Todd, Todd Qualls, T Tall, Todd, Todd, Todd Qualls. It's like, no, I didn't do that. Do it manually. The automated tools will literally take every character in your name, mix it all up, screw it up, and then you're going to be wasting so much time. Okay. But I could take Ken Dewey and do K Dewey. I could do Dewey K. I could do K D. I could do Dewey K, K Dewey, you know, something like that. But I'm not duplicating any names. First of all, Tom Jones on the list. I did not use Bob. I didn't use a nickname. I didn't take Richard and do Bill. Okay. So, but like on John, I could use Jay. Yeah. Or I could do just Roberts too. Done that. So. Adam or Arnold could be A Arnold. Right. It could be A R. Could be R A. Could be Arnold A. You know that kind of stuff. There's an opportunity for extra credit. Yeah. Yes, there is. Tell me about it. There's five extra names. <laughs> Once you get yours done, then do it for a couple other names. You get 10 percent 10 10 extra. Nice. Okay. All I need to know, <clears throat> remember, once you're done, you're going to give me the keys. That's what I want. But for the additional ones, I just need the username and password. Because, I mean, once you get the username and password, you're going to get the same keys. Okay. So, um... There are Windows equivalents to all these as well. If you want to go up into the lab, you can install ZenMap, I think. It runs on Windows just fine. There's one called Brutus. Brutus works as well. Brutus is a Windows-based version of Hydra, which works as well. So it's up to you. You can do whatever you want. But it is all installed on Kali. Okay. Um, so you're not required to write a formal report. I do need to know the username and password you use and the keys you retrieve from the system and the commands you use. My NMAC command was this. My Hydra command was this. I logged in with this. I retrieved the keys with this. And here they are. And then the username and password, and that's it. That's all you need. Okay? Um, so it's extra credit. It says the other ones are mangled just like the rest are just extra names. I just added a few extra. So for each? So if you get Patrick Thomas and your name perfectly, you get 102. If you get your name and all five, you get 110. So we just have to find what name we've been assigned? Yeah, it's up here. You have John Hill. Mine is more letters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad. It's alphabetical. So I take John Hill and mangle it? Yeah, you could do whatever. But again, I did not use abbreviations. I didn't say, I didn't do Jonathan Hill. I mean, I didn't, I didn't use, like, Richard for Bob or something like that. Yes? Uh, two things. One, uh, okay, I forgot that one. The other thing, uh, when, <laughs> oh, well, I'll think of it in a sec. Uh, when you're saying et cetera on the happy face and the mailbox and the bomb and stuff. Yeah, you said et cetera. What is it? So, exactly. I mean, we, we okay. have to. Remember the part in bold up here that says any valid character supported by your protocol? By the protocol. So we have to look up the protocol and figure out. What so if you're using FTP, does FTP support, it's my face and the username? 
No, so don't use it. Does it support a period? Yes, let's use the period. That kind of stuff. Oh, okay. I, I remember. Is there someplace question. better than like Wikipedia to look up what things are supported by? I would just look up FTP manual. I mean, okay. Wikipedia is decent. I just always I trust them all don't them. rely on it all the time. Yeah. Like, for TV episodes, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> when such and such coming back on, they're on the money. <laughs> Much beyond that, not. Yes, sir. Okay, the other question. Uh, so, I bust uh, Leona Bird, uh, and I find five RSA keys or whatever. There's only two sets of keys, yes. Okay, so I But when you get the command, it'll show you the keys. Two keys? Two keys. Okay. So when you break the password, it'll show you the keys. It's no. Automatic. You break the password, you're in the system. Yeah. Then, then you, you got to figure out how to get the keys. keys. Using whatever protocol you use, you have to know. All right. And I told you up here where they at. You need to retrieve the general purpose RA, RSA keys. So once you get into the system, whatever the system is, figure out the command to retrieve a general purpose RSA key. All you got to do. Search. Yeah, what about the, 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 the encryption RS keys? That's the same. It's, it's going to be the same. Command will show you both. Okay, so we get that. One command will show you both. Okay, and those two keys that we're finding, we'd also be able to find them with whatever the bonus ones. It's going to be the same. It's going to be the same key. Okay. All I need is you're using the password with the keys, and then just use the password with the rest. The keys are going to be the same for everybody. Cool. Which kind of sucks. Don't have your brother do your homework. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't have your brother do your homework. All right. Any questions on this? It's not hard. Most people finish this lab very quickly. But I've had people who use the wrong characters in their username, and the system will stop functioning, but it won't tell you, and Hydro will be running for days. Or they make a username list that's stupid. Based on okay, for instance, um, Tom Jones, I would not replace it with A Jones. I've literally had people replace it with every letter in the alphabet. Why would you replace Tom with A? But they've done it's it. A Tom. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of like in the whole John the Ripper. I said just real basic substitutions. I didn't go stupid on you. Okay, that's all there is. It's pretty simple. We can you got a week. Use the rules from that. Kind of try to replace things like that. Yeah, it's even easier than that. Okay. I mean, I, if I was you, I would just sit here and say, okay, Tom Jones. Just jumble the name. I would do Tom Jones. Then I would do Jones Tom. Right. Then I would do just Tom or just Jones or T Jones or Jones T or. Tom That's J. It. Exactly. Okay. So it's more of a jumble than a mangle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah don't don't do this. Jumbly. Just do real big. Do a sum of them. Run it. It's slightly stirred. Does it work? No. <laughs> but when you run it, and if it doesn't finish, I mean, if it doesn't say it found it, and you run it a second time, don't add your names to the bottom of your list. So many people, big old, big old username list, didn't find it. So they add new names to the bottom of the list, run it again. Well, it starts at the top again. So make username one, username two list, multiple lists. So you don't have the same name duplicated because if you already checked T Jones and it didn't work, there's no sense in checking T Jones it. again. Okay. But there's always buts on my projects. <laughs> but this page will be oh my god important to you. And I told you exactly what to do somewhere. Somewhere in today. On Canvas. Okay. Oh. Then I told you many things that are very important. It might we, be very helpful to you. What if we don't use X Any idea where we might look for something that was helpful? Info. Maybe the helpful info page. That might be very handy. I mean, I'm just saying. So, yeah. <coughs> okay. I mean, I put it there to help you guys. I hopefully I'll keep checking there because I've been putting stuff up there for almost every project. What? Never opened. Yeah, I have, really. <laughs> it does I've make your life a little bit easier. It twice. There's like three or four two things. Two different things up there. Are you serious? Yes. There's a pretty big list now, I think. Yeah. Sorry. I do add it every time. Okay. And when you're done with the machine, shut it down, please. Okay. You're saying you add stuff, not replace. 
Oh, yeah, that's at the top. Okay, good. Okay, no, when the other stuff's in there. Okay, then I'm going to start uh, okay. How bad is it for us to just do the red square instead of... That's totally fine. It's no problem at all. Woohoo! Won't hurt it at all. I just know the command. Okay, so you guys are free to go. And let me stop this recording.